Welcome Vault Dwellers, my name is Nacho Bitness. So we're here with Cheaty McCheatface, and if you want to know who she is and why she is, go check out her intro video. We're going to take a look at County Crossing today. I had not intended to show this settlement off. Um, basically because my story idea here fizzled. This campfire and this campfire are not scrappable unless you have mods, and I built this settlement before mods came out. And rather than try and treat these fires as a problem, I decided I was going to make them the centerpiece of the settlement. I built what was going to be a Viking hall. Turns out that was uh, pretty hard to pull off in game, and I had just kind of abandoned the concept. So the reason why I have decided to go ahead and record here anyway is twofold. One, with mods installed, they actually detracted a little bit, I think, from the final look, even though I have spiffed the place up with mods, so I'll explain further in the main part of the video. And second, this is going to be a busy weekend for me. I typically record on weekends and edit and release videos during the rest of the week. So this is a smallish starter settlement that doesn't have a whole lot of room to it. And it's hard to build in because the ground's really uneven and this shack in that house we can't do a whole lot with them with without having the scrap fallout 4 mod installed so yeah this was uh, this was a challenge and uh, yeah I was kind of ready to to go ahead and, and give up on it but because of the reasons I mentioned I got decided to go ahead here let's just take a look it's uh, it's pretty much just a rectangle as far as what the build area is so let's go take a look at what we can do with County Crossing so we're dressed in our engineers armor today because there was really not an outfit that I could use to evoke the Viking aesthetic that I was looking for. It's one of the reasons why the story idea here fizzled was there was really no good costumes to dress my settlers in. I wanted to kind of evoke a, a Hollywood version of Vikings with horned helmets and um, a lot of drinking and feasting and stuff that Things that, uh, that didn't really happen in real life, you know, the, the twist here being that these folks had based their society on a Hollywood version of what Viking life was like without having an idea what, uh, what the real historical fact was. So let's take a look inside the long haul. Now you can see here, the, the idea here was to have these campfires and some roasting meat on spits for you know, big viking feasts and as it turns out, when you add the grass mod, everything in here just kind of looks a little bit out of place. So after I took a look at it, I basically stopped developing the story and stopped doing any kind of decoration, you'll see this place is pretty bare by my standards. We do have our throne room along with all of our great hunting trophies and we've also got a, an area here with a, with a couple of indoor shops that I have not gone and decorated. I've talked before about how I prefer indoor shops as, a co as opposed to roadside stands. Coming up here, I do kind of want to shout out this, uh, this concept here. 
of using these outside walls inside. It was, I wanted to have the firelight, you know, be able to shoot up here and light this entire building without using any kind of electrical lights or after Wasteland Workshop, after, you know, without using any kind of extra candles or anything. So I threw these in of it on the inside and just kind of noodled a little bit on the architecture of inside versus outside. So something to take note of and maybe try out for yourselves and see if you can achieve some results that you like. So uh, quickly mention over here, this is our great big table for, again, for our big Viking feasts up here. It's just barracks style bedding. I had some stories about Viking longhouse and stuff that, again, have kind of fizzled as I look around the defenses on the roof and, you know, I wanted to mention that console folks um, were new to mod community and so I implore everyone to be polite to your mod authors. They are doing this stuff in their free time and giving us lots of great content to play with for free, um, mainly because they see it as a, as a hobby or maybe as a way to try and show off skills to break into the industry. and. I had a mod called Decoration Furniture Expansion Pack that unfortunately broke after the author uploaded his most recent update and the amount of whining that I saw on the Bethesda page for that mod was, well, it, it didn't make me proud to be a console player and to be honest if that mod author said you know what guys I'm done screw y'all I quit um, I wouldn't blame him a little bit last report is that he is uh, desperately trying to fix that mod and more power to him I hope he has success because he had some really great stuff going on that I am gonna miss so Let's just take a quick look around the farm area. This ended up being a, an extremely simple build. There's really nothing going on here that's particularly innovative or interesting other than putting those outside walls inside on the longhouse. So nothing going on crazy like the secret passage at Murkwater Part 2 or the animated dance floor in Egret Tours Part 2 but again I, I just wanted to take an opportunity to do a quick video and remind people to be nice to their mod authors and also just kind of show off that mods aren't always great. The grass mod kind of detracted from what we were looking at inside there. So we've got some outbuildings to go through and we will do that here after we advance the clock and wait until after dark. We're back and it is sunset and whatever you may think about the graphics and the rest of the game I really do think that the skies are pretty and realistic looking. So while we walk in here, I'm going to mention that uh, sources are reporting that Nuka World is going to be the last story DLC for Fallout 4 and I think that's a shame because they, they just seem to miss a little bit when it came to atmosphere in this game and then they were doing so great when it came to Far Harbor they were just firing on all cylinders 
And I'm certainly hoping that that will be the case with Nuka World, but I'm disappointed that we really only get two story DLCs and in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas we uh, we got four. Um, I suppose we could count Automatron, but that was really only one quest and it was uh, it was just a little bit bare bones in my opinion when it when it came to that quest. So regardless of uh, of me complaining about it, uh, we're gonna soldier on. We're gonna take a look at uh, this roadside stand here. Now I've said that I don't normally care for roadside stands, but in this case where they are um, located right next to the entrance of the settlement and everyone has to filter past them, I think they sort of make sense. This basic structure was more or less um, something that I saw on the Mad Queen show and um, to some extent on No Respawns channel I have gone ahead and replaced the level 3 vendor stand with a counter and done a little bit of uh, your do-it-yourself decoration in there and we've got a clinic over here where you can come up and talk to the doctor outside and he can check and make sure that you've got caps or barter before he lets you in over here there's a small waiting area and just a few medical supplies and a couple of beds for the doctor to do some examinations over here well what were you what so that was strange. But anyways, uh, over here we've got our, uh, our shack for crafting chems, and I think that, uh, that having a vent is a good thing because it's, uh, it's likely to get uh, kind of smelly in here and maybe have some dangerous fumes, so some proper ventilation is going to be good. We've got a communal bathroom with a fire both to try and heat the water and also just to try and take the edge off the chill when it comes to uh, trying to wash yourself out here in the winter time and a crafting shack over here took the beds out of here that were that were located inside originally can't remember if I mentioned it in the daytime part, but we've got a guard station over here to keep an eye on the ghouls that are always seeming to spawn over there at the National Guard training yard inside the barracks here is, is an actual barracks. Uh, it's, it's dark now because I didn't run electricity out here. Um, that's weird. Did you see the way the windows are glitching in and out there? I think I may have gone and glitched the uh, settlement size bar here a bit much. But even though it's dark now, it's actually fairly well lit in the daytime, and that's actually what I wanted because I wanted some place where a person could actually sleep at night rather than having lights blazing in his face. Now we do have a water purifier here if you are careful and if you are persistent you can glitch one of the great big water purifiers in here. Now this powerhouse here um, brings up something that I wanted to mention which is I think that it is great that mods allow us to scrap these terrible broken structures that Bethesda left here for us. On the other hand, I think that we... the creativity that it takes to try and glitch things in and make something usable out of these broken places um, means that we end up with something that actually looks better in the long run so I encourage you guys not to get too aggressive when it comes to 
scrapping things now that we've got mods because I think this actually looks better as a mix of the destroyed pre-war and the new scrappy after war aesthetic so got one little thing left to show and that is yeah you probably th thought I forgot about them at this one but nope everybody poops and this settlement has bathrooms just like all the others this particular set of bathrooms is the somewhat scrappy and improvised outhouse style as opposed to the pre-made outhouses that we get with the barn tab from Far Harbor but I, I think it works I do also think that uh, you probably do your business in a, in a hurry when it's January in New England. So, come inside here. I will say that despite my disappointment with how this place ended up overall, I do like that I was able to light the entire place just using those two campfires. There's no other lights in here and it is dim but not completely dark on the second floor and third floor which is exactly what I wanted when it came to trying to put together a place for people to sleep. So as we come out here on the roof um, my next settlement is going to be the slog and it's one that is got a big monolithic structure to it but it's not barrack style housing um, I think I've crafted an interesting story for the slog and I'm eager to show it but I need to uh, spend some time getting it decorated and looking as good as uh, as I feel like it deserves so if there's kind of a long pause for the next video don't worry it's coming um, if you liked what you saw be sure to click that like button and maybe watch some other videos on the channel if you like those too be sure to hit subscribe and if you didn't like what you saw do me a favor and tell me why so I can try and do better next time this is Nacho Business saying it's a great big wasteland out there. Let's go have fun in it.